Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain uh, surgical consideration of impacted K9 for orthodontic treatment. For orthodontic treatment, we can consider in interceptive treatment, surgical exposure, methods of applying traction, and retention consideration. So what is interceptive treatment? Interceptive treatment means prevention of uh, impacted maxillary canine. When uh, the clinician suspect that there is a chance of impacted maxillary canine, then uh, an attempt should be made to prevent its impaction. Uh, this uh, attempt uh, for the prevention of maxillary impacted canine is known as an interceptive treatment. Uh, as we know that the discrepancy uh, between the arch length and mesiodistal dimension of the uh, tooth arch, uh, or you can say are the teeth. Uh, this is the most common cause of impacted maxillary canine. Therefore, when uh, um, the clinician suspect that uh, there is a chance of impacted maxillary canine, that then uh, um, the removal of uh, deciduous canine at the age of eight or nine year will enhance eruption and self-correction of labial impaction. The basically uh, for interceptive treatment, the initial orthodontic uh, treatment aim is to create a space uh, for the for the impacted cane. And here you can see impacted cane, and there is uh, uh, there is an attempt to create in a uh, space, and sometimes. Uh, the removal of the premoral is premoral is also uh, indicated. So, what is a surgical exposure? Uh, when it is done, surgical exposure is done when uh, uh, the interceptive treatment fails or is ineffective. Uh, so, it is indicated when tooth does not erupt spontaneously after creating a space in the arch and it should be attempted six months after the root formation. Uh, how the mm, flap should be designed uh, for the surgical exposure of the maxillary impacted canine, it should be designed in such a way that you must preserve the band of the attached gingiva. Here you can see that uh, uh, there is a four corner flap, but it, it is apically positioned in such a way that there is an intact uh, attached gingiva. You should not remove this portion of the gingiva. And second thing is that uh, it is designed in such a way that it should not obstruct the path of eruption uh, of the tooth. It should guide or facilitate the eruption of the uh, maxillary canine. Uh, here you can see uh, the attached gingiva sufficient attached gingiva. This is the bulge created by the uh, um, uh, crown of the impacted maxillary tooth. When, so when you will surgically, uh, epically, reposition, uh, epically position flap is created, uh, then there is a sufficient amount of attached gingiva will be available. So the success rate is 100%. Now, what are the techniques uh, uh, for the surgical exposure? There is an open technique and the flow there are two types of open techniques. One is excisional approach, other is the epically positioned flap, and the closed technique, closed eruption technique, and open window eruption technique. Don't confuse this open window word with this open technique. This open window is open window word is because you will create a window in the uh, in the in the bone. So this is basically intraosseous movement of the impacted maxillary K9, you will move the tooth in the bone to the normal position. Now come to the open technique. Uh, as we said that the, there is a, an excisional approach and other is the apically position flap. Excisional approach mean that you will remove the portion of the tissue. Here we will see the excisional approach. And second thing is, that uh, you will remove the portion of the soft tissue 
but keep in mind as we said earlier that the sufficient uh, amount of a attached gingiva must be present around the crown of the uh, maxillary uh, impacted canine and they suggest that at least 2 to 3 mm of attached gingiva must be uh, must cover the uh, crown of the uh, impacted canine uh, <clears throat> so here you uh, can uh, see clinically uh, here, this is the place uh, um, the clinical area of the impacted maxillary canine, uh, mandibular canine. This example is a, uh, from the mandibular impacted canine. Here you can see a vertical impact, impaction. Uh, and now this is tissue is excised with the help of a cartridge. The uh, tissue has been excised in order to expose the, uh, in order to expose the crown. Here you can see the crown has been fully exposed. Now you can place a bracket over here, or as the orthodontist decide, the ortho, uh, orthodontist can place the bracket later on. So this is in the addressing has been applied for the time being. Now open ticking in epically positioned flap when the crown is not deeply placed. It is a mesially, mesially positioned, uh, but is not deeply placed and uh, crown should be uh, completely exposed with the help of an epically positioned flap. See, let's see here. Now, as we discussed earlier, this is an excisional approach. And epically reposition, this is epically reposition. Epically positioned flap. So, what is the difference between these two? Can we uh, do an epical uh, position flap over here? No. This is far away. If will you, you will take an apical position over here, then that is very, very far away. And you are removing a, a not non-keratinized or you can alveolar mucosa, not the attached gingiva. This is very, very important that you should must keep intact uh, there. So apical uh, position flap here is not possible because it is considered as a deep or as a far away from the alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge. This, this is alveolar ridge. This is far away as compared to this one. Now here see that this, this is very close to the alveolar ridge. So you can easily take a flap and position it epically and it will, this, uh, this maxillary impacted canine will come out. In this case, you can and this is a case of an unerupted K9 uh, of a 16 year old girl and has been in this situation for two years and not, has not progressed. Now the apical position flap has been taken, four corner flap and this uh, attached gingiva is intact and it is, it is close to the alveolar ridge. Sometime uh, there is a space is not available so you can create a space by by the uh, by the orthodontic tractions and a second uh, thing is that you can also place a bracket if it is needed but in this case there was no need to place any orthodontic bracket or orthodontic treatment treatment it comes spontaneously uh, uh, after after a uh, 9 months here you can see that this is a fully fully erupted k9 now here is another example. You can see this is the area of the impacted K9. And this is a bulge and also the thinning of the uh, mucosa uh, over the uh, crown of the impacted K9. Uh, here you can see uh, that uh, that is uh, touching the uh, lateral incisor. Uh, you can see a lateral incisor touching the lateral incisor. Uh, now this uh, epically uh, is flap is reflected four corner flap you can see the crown is fully exposed bracket has been uh, placed over here and uh, flap has been repositioned in its original position now uh, we discuss the excisional approach epically uh, positioned flap then now we will come to the close technique. So uh, in 
closed technique when the impacted tooth move within the soft tissue and in uh, open window eruption technique or you can say a tunnel eruption technique the impacted tooth move within the bony window let's discuss it now a closed eruption technique here you can see the flap has been reflected this is the bulge showing the uh, crown of an impacted maxill uh, maxillary canine uh, now the crown has been exposed and in the third step you can say that the attachment uh, is bonded over here and you can see here the ligature wire you can see a ligature wire is also attached with the attachment and then the flap is repositioned in its uh, original uh, position and leaving a twisted ligature wire and uh, through the mucosa to apply orthodontic traction later on. Now here you can see another example. Uh, this is uh, an impacted canine which is stretching the uh, central incisor. Uh, now the, this deciduous uh, tooth has been removed and uh, this uh, permanent canine has been exposed. Here you can see uh, an orthodontic uh, button and a golden chain has been placed. And then the flap is repositioned uh, by a close eruption technique. And uh, after uh, six months, you can say uh, this is uh, an erupted uh, K9, fully erupted K9. Now, steps of uh, close uh, eruption technique can be sub summarized as a flap is elevated, attachment is placed on the impacted tooth, uh, ligature is placed over the attachment, and uh, reposition the flap in its original location. And uh, then finally, the permission uh, of impacted K9 in normal direction by uh, orthodontic forces. Now, let's see this uh, discussion in a, a, as a case report. Uh, here you can see pre-op of an impacted K9, uh, and this is a retained deciduous tooth. This is central incisor, this is lateral incisor. And this is a clinical picture. This is central incisor, this is lateral incisor, and this is retained deciduous tooth. Now, after this procedure has been done, there is, there is a close eruption technique. You can see here that the tooth will move under the soft tissue. That is, you can see that there was no bony window. There was no bony window is involved in this procedure. Flap is reflected, and then a crown is exposed, attachment is placed with help of a ligature, traction is applied and this flap over here and now this tooth will move within the soft tissue, not within the bone. So in close eruption technique, the tooth will move within the soft tissue to its normal uh, occlusion uh, position. Uh, here you can see the post of picture that is a normal uh, K9 here. This is a clinical picture. You can see the impacted K9 now has come in a normal erupted position. You can compare the pre-op and post of OPG. You can also compare the clinical picture pre-op and post-op. Now we have finished the open technique and as well as the close eruption technique and the close technique. Now in the close technique, we will come to the open window eruption technique. As we know, there's the open window eruption technique indicates the intraosseous movement uh, of the maxillary canine. That is the movement of the canine within the bone. So far, aligning deep intraosseous impacted canine osseous tunnel provided towards the center of the alveolar ridge 
and uh, sometimes the socket of deciduous canine can be used as a tunnel for the movement of the impacted canine. Now, let's see an example. We will explain this technique with the help of an example. Here you can see an uh, impacted canine touching the root of the lateral incisor. This is a, uh, a deciduous canine, retained deciduous canine. Here you can see this is a central incisor, this is lateral incisor, this is central, this is lateral incisor, and this is retained deciduous tooth that will be removed. Here you can see the deciduous canine has been removed and this flap has been created and flap has been reflected and now a window or fenestration will be made over here. You can see here the window and the crown of the tooth is now fully exposed. Now this is the uh, socket area of the deciduous canine. You can use this deciduous canine for the eruption for the path of the eruption. So this is a tunnel between the this window and why this window is created? Because we will apply the bracket over here. Uh, attachment, this is eyelid. This you can uh, place attachment over here. Here you can see you will uh, place an, an attachment and through this socket attraction wire you can see here and we will apply, we will attach this uh, attraction wire or ligature with this attachment and now we will uh, we will apply the forces in this tunnel which is created over here between this window and the uh, socket of the deciduous tooth here you can see the uh, this process has been completed and now flap is in its proper original position and you can see here the ligature wire through which we will uh, uh, move this tooth to the normal position now uh, let's see this discussion in a, as a case presentation. Here you can see uh, um, uh, impacted canine uh, uh, retained deciduous tooth, and you can see here the de deflection uh, towards the distally because this is pressing. So clinically, what you will see here you can see a typical picture of an impacted canine retained deciduous tooth. And when the central and the lateral incisor, you can see these, these position, you will suspect that there is a impacted K9 before the radiograph uh, is taken. This process has been completed. Here you can see that uh, uh, bony window was created and this is totally uh, uh, the movement of the tooth within the bone, within the bone. Intraosseous movement of the K9 through traction. After the completion of this uh, uh, treatment, you can now compare. Yeah, you can see here in the post of OPG, the normal erupted K9. Clinically, you can see the erupted K9 in its position. Now compare the pre-op and post of OPG. And also compare the pre-op and post-op clinical picture the different surgical and orthodontic techniques are available for the recovery of impacted maxillary canine. Their proper management requires acceptable surgical techniques that apply forces in proper direction to avoid damage to the adjacent teeth and achieve the best results. Since it is a complex procedure, therefore it requires a multidisciplinary approach. In order to provide the standard treatment to patients, the clinician should have effective communication with each other. Thank you.